Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. Uh, this is a talk that was broadcast at Educause 2018. Uh, I jumped in remotely and it was added onto an NGDLE session. So I figured I'd record it just as a standalone piece. Um, it's promise it's slightly less ranty than last time. No, I don't promise that. Okay, so uh, bringing education, it's Roku moment. I am your voiceover, Brian Olendike. I work at College of Arts and Architecture at Penn State in uh, the Office of Digital Learning. So what is the analogy we're drawing? Well, it's that all of us have one of these boxes. We have uh, presumably for a long time, um, unless you were born after the 80s in which no one knows what this is. So this is a cable box. And the cable box brought you information in a standards-based way. Um, it was regulated heavily. Uh, there were only a few options, well, then it expanded to hundreds, but they're basically the same option. And it had consistent methods of plugging it into things you already had, like a TV. So then in comes this, which also plugs into things you already had using this similar standard, but it's uniting all that cool stuff that exists out in the universe called the internet uh, into a one consistent UI that makes it so easy for you to use that people are just leaving cable in droves. So what I'll say that is, this is kind of related to NGDLE, uh, which is uh, an Educause phrase coined in, uh, in 2014, I believe, uh, which stands for Next Generation Digital Learning Environment. Now, I like to think of this as Next Generation Distributed Learning Ecosystem, right? So this kind of, it, evocative imagery leads you to, okay, well, if the Roku is uniting this experience and bringing together these dispersed things, that's kind of the analogy here, is that NGDLE is Roku, whereas LMS is cable. Um, and so in this space, in this trying to reinvent ourselves and having a myriad of options and having single ways of operating with them, we might think this is a unique giant problem for institutions only, um, but really we're not that unique in this regard. So if you've ever used uh, Microsoft or Google product, I'll say that earlier in their histories, they had this same problem. And the way they solved them was through good design, through universal design principles, and through basically saying, anytime we have a new idea, a new innovation, whether it's maps or we bought YouTube or we're creating the new Play Store, whatever it is, we're gonna create an icon for it, we're gonna name it, we're gonna put it at a new URL, and we are going to integrate it into the rest of our ecosystems in a consistent way, right? I log into Google, every single button I click from there knows that I'm already in. We can equate that potentially to LTI. But unlike just LTI in an LMS standpoint, they have, Google and Microsoft have whole design frameworks and libraries and ways of describing these things so that once you use one of their products, you basically know how to use all the others. Now it's not perfect, but it reduces the cognitive load to a point that you can actually just use any new thing they make. So this is trying to address NG daily problem one. There's a lot of places to go. And so in order to resolve a lot of places to go, you need control and you need design consistency. We need to try and get some form of design and UX consistency to at least reduce that cognitive load as much as possible. So in project that we work on called Elms Learning Network, we've done this through uh, a consistency to our UI. Buttons all operate the same way. They, they're designed in a similar fashion. There's this hierarchy of I'm in the course, then these are the applications for my course, then this is me using one of those applications. That's kind of the pattern we've been trying to mirror. But when you click and you go off to like a canvas, you go, ugh, okay, well, you're stuck with kind of the way that that ended up looking. And while their UI is consistent, uh, we're not placing them in their content inside of us, if you will. And so perhaps we're, we're stuck. Well, turns out not really. Um, this, you know, if you have a couple of these rough edges, uh, that can be explained to students what the difference is between these, uh, you know, why we do things a certain way. Um, so as long as you're explaining that and we make sure every course we explain this to students, that there's these two, these two primary solutions, everything plugs into them. Um, it's really not that big a deal. So again, just making sure that you're lessening cognitive load as much as you can. When you can't, you're explaining it well. So uh, another problem that starts to emerge though is we have solutions that are out there for people that aren't just students, right? So faculty have lots of options out there, uh, lots of sources, whether those are internal to the systems I'm illustrating here or you know, we go and purchase 
something new, whether it's a, a Dropbox or Box or what have you, uh, or Kaltura, well, we need to integrate that. And integrating is a technical problem, but it's also a visual and cognitive load problem. And so the second problem with NGDLE is that there are always going to be other systems that exist. We just kind of have to accept this. We can't just, you know, we're not in a space where if we want to do anything innovative, we'll just buy one thing and walk away and call it done. We have to buy and integrate lots of different applications across the institution for a myriad of purposes. And those are going to be of different standards. We can't get everyone out there to adopt LTI, and those use cases don't even always make sense. So we need to find a way to unify design and navigation experience across as much of it as we can and explain away what we can't. So at least one aspect of this with cable is right once you turn on cable TV or back in the 80s if you flipped on the television and you cranked it to the right frequency, it operated the same way. You had a very simple control, right? That remote control. However, we're not talking about that part even. We're just talking about the way at which our people build and assemble things to have that remote control level of control. So how do we get to that world? Uh, what does that look like? if we were to integrate solutions. So I think BYU is actually doing this the best of anyone I've seen. Um, they have this you know, methodology out, Troy Martin, I like this quote by him, but he said, uh, I tell vendors, you're the Lego brick and we are the grid plate. And that's all well and good to have Lego based imagery. There's a ton of that that flies around NGDLE, but they're one of the few groups that's actively engaged in solving this. And so not using their visual, using kind of bridging this to the NGDLE thing. They're not solving things for NGDLE. Um, I would say that this is kind of the world we're trying to go towards as far as reducing cognitive load as much as possible. So if on the one hand, colleges and universities have to provide solutions in order for instructors to teach learners, right? If we're to hop like what this is saying. And so Instead of uh, today, where a lot of us will say, oh, well, we bought Canvas, or we have our own Sakai instance, or, or Moodle, or what have you, and then uh, we have really cool TED, you know, TED Talk integration, and really cool Vimeo integration. Instead of those being integrated just into those few systems, we should be thinking about creating almost this router that everything at the institution that provides or needs to get data plugs into. BYU has done this. You can look up university API. It's incredibly impressive uh, work. But effectively then, once we have everything plugged into one location, now we can plug everything else in the universe into that. So everything we build and buy gets plugged into here. From an instructor's standpoint then, they should have access to the entire universe of applications at the institution, no matter how they go about doing that. If they're in the LMS because that meets their needs best, then all of that stuff should be wired in in such a way that they have access to it. If it's a standalone app on a, a phone or on a computer or on a tablet that they have that's, you know, my institution and they click the my institution and they have access to every application right there, that's all they should have to do. If that's in Elms or some content management system, so be it. They should have access to the same options, the same capabilities, no matter where they are. Similarly, then back to the students, they should only have to go one place. They shouldn't have to know all of those different things. And those different places, you know, going to one place should connect them seamlessly to the things the instructor has routed forward to them. And so we are working on solutions in this space to attempt to achieve this. Um, and I will say right now, as I keep saying, we are actively looking for partners, collaborators, developers, grant writers, people to adopt, to test, anyone and everyone to join us in this effort. Because this is going to take you know, a social movement, really, to, to adopt NGDLE and fully realize it in higher education. This isn't just a solution. This is a mindset for developing, creating, and buying and integrating uh, any solution. So solution one we've been working on is a project called OER Schema. So OER Schema helps improve the discoverability of pedagogical content. You can learn more about this project at oerschema.org, but effectively it's an RDF-based model uh, for ins instructional resources and pedagogy, uh, but expressing that to computers, if you will. So 
the way that would look is that in the markup that actually makes up the, uh, the website, you would have these things like, hey, this is a task. And uh, this is a task. Okay, so we have property task. The name of this task is this. This is for this item. And that you could start to basically say, you know, express to machines, this part of the page isn't just a part of a page. It's a part, it's describing an assessment that I'm going to deliver. And that if that is semantically written correctly, now we can discover all of the assessments at the institution more effectively, no matter where they are. We could discover all the learning objectives, no matter what system they're in, even if that's the faculty member putting this on their own computer and then sending the files to someone, that it could all be related. Solution two is to adopt a standard called Web Components. Uh, we did not invent the Web Components standard, but we feel it is the best way to achieve the NGDLE vision more f most fully. And so if you go to webcomponents.org, you can see that it's actually a series of specifications that means that all browsers agree on a way of handling custom HTML tags. So what does that mean? Because it's a pretty awesome, you know, groundbreaking type of thing that we're able to use now. Well, it's so awesome, let's, let's blow it up. So um, if we were to think back, you know, uh, paragraph tags and div tags and table tags and the, the, the guts that make up the website you're looking at this on right now, that's actually made love just thousands of those and they're stacked up forever. Well, what if you could make your own that had their own implications? So that's what Web Components allows you to do. It allows you to know that that's gonna work everywhere the same way regardless of where you're viewing it. Just the same as a paragraph tag on one page is gonna look the same in every browser. So in this case, I'm making an awesome explosion tag that has a size and a color associated with it. Now, this isn't magic. It's a standard way that you go about doing this. And inside the guts of that tag, the browser is effectively being told, hey, I want you to put an image and the image should be this size. So it's, abs it's an abstraction that allows you to use and write HTML more semantically, and then the developer's intention is placed there. So what that ends up looking like, right, in this case, this is a card, uh, an ODL card that's on the interface. That is actually its own brand new HTML tag. If that ODL card appeared in a learning management system and the learning management system was taught how to render an ODL card, which is very easy, then you could design something for any website, whether it's a LMS, whether it's a CMS, whether it's a desktop application, no matter what it is, this will render the same way and function the same way no matter where you put it. This is a groundbreaking concept. So what if we took this capability and we applied it to higher education? Uh, I don't know, we care a lot about accessibility because we have to and it's the right thing to do. And video, video looks so blah normally. But what if we use this standard to produce a highly accessible, searchable transcript that play, you know, jogs along as you're watching the video. Uh, what if when you scrolled by it, it acted like CNN.com where the video stickies to the corner of the page? That's a lot of code and work, right? Or I could give you that tag because Nikki Masaru Kaufman on our team developed it. And so then you could just load the definition into wherever you're building or buying the thing and then place this information there and you would get the same player, the same experience, right? That's transformative. So we've been doing this for two years and we've got north of 100 of them or 200 of them rather, and they work anywhere. And we're going to just keep making everything this way because we can reuse our own code across our projects in a way that's unparalleled. We're literally using the same code. We're not just taking our ideas. It's, the, it's building blocks, it's Legos. And so this leads to solution three, one of the places we're putting those Legos, which is Elm's Learning Network, a platform for deploying and developing instructional innovation. Now you can learn more about Elm's Learning Network at elmsleln.org, Elms uh, but effectively it goes back to that initial idea with Microsoft and Google we expressed, which is that whenever we get a new idea, we're gonna throw it in a new domain. It's pretty simple. And so if that's course content and instructional, you know, instructional workflow um, for students to, to learn and go through pacing, we're gonna put that at one address. That's gonna be, in this case, this course's address. But then if I'm going to you know, 
need to go to a studio or maybe in the material it says, hey, now it's time to do this activity, I'm going to have a consistent user interface for how to get to that new, that new application, right, much like Google had. And then when I get there, I'm going to have the same hierarchy, right? The top is kind of the, hey, this is where, you know, what course we're in. This is how to get to the critical aspects. These are the applications that I have access to here. Studios for my learning. Here's how I use Studio, right? It's the same hierarchy using color and design consistency so that you don't have to learn the difference between these applications as we make new ones. And so this could be radically different from what the core system solution is, but we were able to build it using all of the same components and roll it out at a different address, allowing us to drastically reduce the number of people and the amount of time it takes to produce this while maintaining accessibility, quality, and security. So this leads to solution four, um, which you kind of just have to see to believe because most people tell me it doesn't exist, and that's fine. So uh, which is HACKS. HACKS is short for headless authoring experience. You can check it out at haxtheweb.org. But effectively, it is a next generation authoring solution that boils up to be a single tag that can be placed in the browser. And so you end up getting something like this. It's authoring experience injected into whatever it is that you're working on. But they said you have to see it, and so let's see it. So this is, you know, a course page in Elms, as I mentioned, and so this is for a course we have, right? So I can have a speedier experience as a result of web component technology. I get design consistency. I get, you know, just the way things click, the way they feel, moving around. I can see kind of the entire instructional outline of what it is I'm working on, right? This is a giant online text. And then there's those links off to other spaces, whether they be external, internally facing, all right, I want to edit this page. And forever, we've had access to these WYSIWYGs that are kind of just the. And so we said, well, we want to make a new way to modify this. So this is hacks. Hacks is injected into the interface here. And so I could reach out and I could touch this text. I could move it around. I could delete it. I could duplicate it if I need to work on this paragraph, maybe splice it, what have you. It also can do way more than that. So if I go to, in this case, make, and I want to make something, these are a one-to-one -one relationship to those web components standard I mentioned. So the components themselves know how to talk to hacks. The components work anywhere, and we can throw them in that you know, front-facing blog, or we can put them in an LMS or what have you, anywhere that knows how to read it. But let's say I want to make a license. I want to license this faculty member's work. And so the, the title is uh, DMT100. It's available at some address. The license I want to apply to it is Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial. And uh, the creator of this is uh, Michael Collins. And so I can have a consistent authoring interface with simple options to be able to you know, ma manipulate what effectively is an HTML tag. So that when I hit update, I get a well-designed license. This is a 100% uh, not just accessible, but semantic tag that could teach um, web crawlers and things that come along, oh, hey, uh, this is related to this work, and so I know the license of this work. And then I would go and I'd hit save, and we have this here. But we didn't want to just build this for Elm's Learning Network, so I'm not going to save that. It, it works anywhere, literally. Literally, it can be anything can be taught how to use this with minimal effort. And so we've integrated it into many different systems and we've started creating all kinds of different tags. So, you know, if that's a video player, right, we've created a consistent way to manipulate that. Maybe I move it so it's here. Let's move it up above those bars. Uh, I need to edit it and I get this fly out. We've got the consistency of where this is. Uh, the title of this is uh, Hacks. Why do I need to go anywhere? And that's that tag that I showed before, that's that highly accessible video player. If I wanted to jack up the speed at which the video plays, and maybe we'll take the volume down and hit play, you can see I have a really, I talk really fast, even without caffeine, as long as you can speed up the video a bunch. So I would say, oh, you know what, that's not, that's not the video. I want to go to, and again, this going back to that, that diagram, 
shown earlier, these are examples. This is to get you thinking in this way. What if we took Box or we took Google Docs or we took OneDrive or we took Canvas Notes, whatever the thing is, and it got integrated into here so that now instead of going to these sources, we're able to bring the sources to us. Like if I want to search YouTube for Hacks the Web so that I can tell you more about Hacks the Web, I shouldn't have to go to YouTube, learn their interface. I should be able to just pull the data in in a consistent manner and then I should be able to know the different ways that I can render that information for other users and then I should be able to just put it down. And so that's a video from YouTube, but I didn't go to YouTube and find it, it just came to me basically. Similar to adding, I don't, this is just a, a, an example demo here, but if I had a, uh, say, a CSV file, if I drag and drop and uploaded it, but this is a demo, I'm just gonna point to a URL for one, and I would configure that, you'd go, oh, CSV file that kind of resembles an HTML table, so why not just take one? Um, so this is a highly accessible HTML data table um, in the browser. It wrote all the TRs, TDs, if you understand what any of that means, because most people don't. That's the, the thing we're trying to solve here. So uh, there's a, a table on the page. I can manipulate it after the fact, change the size of it, move it to the middle, cool. So the idea is that we can build anything using this standard and we can ship it anywhere. And one of those anythings and anywheres happens to be a full on authoring system that in the end is just a single tag. And that everything that's going on here, everything I'm clicking on is a web component, a web component that will look and work the same no matter what solution I use. So if I want to you know, meme an image from NASA and pull in what the details of the image are, uh, that means nothing, right? If I want to do that, put it on the page, maybe tell a joke, pull in something and meme it up, then I can. I, like, what, I don't need image editing capabilities. I don't need to understand uh, that NASA has a thing and then go and search and download the image. No, I can pull all that together. We can pull all these things together into one place. And while ultimately at the end of the day, everything that's going on here is it's just writing HTML. Writing as HTML that if I were to, you know, in this case, delete any part of it, like delete the bottom of this and hit import, you'll see it's all exactly the same, but that header and the other tag went away. So this is your university on purchasing contracts or what it could be, what we could get everything towards. Right, a consistent way of manipulating even this funny meme within a meme. And so with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, and if you're interested in helping us create the Roku, if you will, for education, this, this pattern of design and, and UX consistency and authoring, editing, integrations capability, these are some of the projects that we're working on currently that we think can help bring that future to reality. Thank you.